I built the best 2x2 in Rust. This base comes equipped with the wide gap shooting floor, compound breach peaks, bedrooms on each floor of the base, tons of storage, all inside an easy to build 6 to 8 player clan base. Whether you're a seasoned Rust veteran or a new player, you can build this base at any skill level. To fully build the base, you'll need 113,000 metal fragments and 73,000 stone, while the upkeep will cost you around 32,000 metal and 13,000 stone a day. Hi guys and welcome to the tour. Starting off the tour, we have four disconnectable TCs. These will cost around 1300 metal frags and 900 stone a day. In case your main TC gets broken, you can disconnect these external TCs by placing twig right here and a twig roof right here. This will break the connection and when you're ready, you can then replace the connection by placing floor frames right here. Headed into our gatehouse, we have peeks into the compound. In the compound, we can fit four auto turrets, four compound bedrooms, and eight large furnaces. Stepping into the compound bedrooms, we can fit two beds, a box, and a locker. These bedrooms have angles outside of the compound, as well as looking back into the compound as well. Next, we're gonna step inside the base. Through the single door airlock, on each four sides of the base, we have our batteries. On the first floor of the inner peaks, we also have breach peaks into the compound. Headed up the staircase, we have an entrance to our second floor. Here we can fit nine electric furnaces, a few small furnaces, and our tier two workbench. Heading downstairs, this is our TC room. For the first day of your wipe, you'll probably be storing most of your loot in this room. Next, we're gonna head upstairs. If you hop on top of this repair bench, you get a nice angle looking down. And these horizontal embrasures give you a nice peek to retake the top of your inner peaks. Headed up, we have a few beds, a locker, and the entrance to the top of our inner peaks. Here we can fit a few more beds, and we have ramp peaks looking below. On the sides, we have peaks into our compound, and behind this door, we have two large boxes, and an angle towards a potential raid base. Headed up the chute, we have an ankle biter peak into our open core, and the entrance to our main loot. On each side, we have two bedrooms, some boxes, and our open core. Here we can fit 30 large boxes, and our tier 3 workbench. Next, we're gonna head upstairs. Here we have another ankle biter peak to retake the next floor. Some more boxes, beds, and peaks into our open core. Once again, if you hop on top of this repair bench, you get some pretty insane angles into the compound, as well as a way to retake your shooting floor. On this floor, we have a couple beds, lockers, boxes, and retakes for our shooting floor, as well as our roof. Headed out the single door, we have our shooting floor. Hopping on top of this roof peak enables us to retake our roof. Behind the single door, we have an interesting roof peak that lets us look down without being spotted from the raid base. And in each of the four corners, we have our freehand peaks. Next, we're gonna head up to the roof. On the roof, we have spots for four SAM sites, four out of turrets, and eight windmills. All right, that's the base. Now let's learn how to build it. Starting off the build, we're gonna place a one by one for our TC room. You can place the TC in the far left corner and a double door as the exit. Next, we're gonna expand into a two by two. Wall in on the sides and add a jump up in the right square. Next, you can place double door frames and seal off the roof. Continuing the jump up, we're gonna place walls right here double doors and exit and seal off the roof. In our TC room, we can place a shelf right here, four boxes, a few small furnaces, our tier one workbench, and a few bags for our team. Underneath the jump up, we can add a ramp place a couple more drop boxes. Next, we're gonna build the second floor. Start by placing a single door here, followed by a wall, 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 and our jump up. Place two half walls on each side, followed by a window on top of them. Next, you can add your jump up, a square ladder hatch frame for stability, and seal off the roof. You can then seal your jump up, and add a double door as your exit. 
on the entrance to the second floor of your base, you can place a single door. And as a way to get inside your base, place a foundation and a wood staircase. On the jump up, you can place a repair bench as a peak, which lets you see down below your base. Place horizontal embrasures here. And if you have the building skin DLC, you can upgrade this to brick to make a smaller hitbox. In this area below the jump up, we're going to add nine electric furnaces if you have them unlocked. If not, you can have two large boxes here. There's a double door frame here and here, as well as garage doors. At this point, you most likely have a tier two workbench, so you can place that right here, as well as a few more small furnaces. If you rotate a small box sideways like this, you can actually fit two small boxes underneath the workbench. Next, we're gonna move up to the roof. Here you can add a window on each side, followed by a double door as the exit and seal off the roof. Early on, this area becomes really vital to defending your base. If you have them unlocked, you can place beds and lockers up here as well. This ensures if you get early game raided, you can easily defend your base. This is how the base should look like. Next, we're going to expand into the shell of the base. We're going to build this on all four sides. Start off by surrounding the starter base in square foundations. And following this pattern on each of the four sides. Next, we're going to add a triangle on each of these four corners. And now we're going to start building our breach peaks. Start by placing a half wall right here and here. On top of that, you can add window frames. Repeat this on all four sides. On each of the four corners, we're going to add an entrance with single doors and a battery room to the right side. Fill in the ceiling with a tile and place either a window or a single door frame for your battery. Repeat this on the other four sides. Next, we're going to finish our breach peaks by placing triangle roof tiles. Triangle ladder has frames in the windows. To speed this process up, I'm going to turn on symmetry so whatever I build shows up on all four sides. You're going to repeat this process on each of the four sides. Start by building double door frames in each of the four corners, followed by windows on top of them. Next, you can place a full wall right here and here and windows on top of the left and right side of the breach peak. In the very middle, you can place a half wall and fill in this area with triangle floors. In each of the four corners, you can build up with full walls and place a half wall on top of each of the window frames, followed by a single door in the middle. Next, on each of the four sides, you can place a square floor, followed by a square ladder hedge frame on the left side. Place a low ramp on the right side and on the left side, we're going to build up in the inner peaks. Place a ramp that's connected to the other ramp. You can upgrade this to sheet metal and destroy the twig below. On each of the four sides, we're going to build up with the square foundation, followed by double door frames for two floors, a square floor tile, half walls around the sides, a sheet metal ramp, followed by a floor, and another sheet metal ramp. This next step of the process is going to be symmetrical on two sides of the base only. So it's going to be symmetrical on that side and that side, as well as that side and that side. 
I'm going to turn on two sided symmetry on Builder Sanctuary to speed up this process. Start by placing a twig half wall on top of your airlock, followed by a triangle, and on the inside of your base, place a square ladder hatch frame and upgrade to stone. On the opposite side, you're going to place a twig half wall, followed by a triangle floor, and on this side, you're going to place a square floor tile. You can then remove the twig buildup. On the side of the base with a double door exit from your starter, we're going to add a jump up to the next floor. Start by placing a half wall and a window on each side of the base. Next, we're going to add a double door frame and seal off the roof. To jump up to the next floor, we're going to add a triangle floor and a double door frame. We can fill in this section with full walls and a double door exit. You can then place another window on top of your first window, triangle floor, and a double door frame. If you have them available, you can place a garage door here or temporarily place a double door. Next, we're gonna seal off the top of our inner peaks. And on the other two sides, we're gonna fill in these slots with full walls. Jumping down, we're gonna add a half wall here, followed by a low wall, a jump up, and double door frames as our entrance and exit. Going up one more floor, we're gonna put a full wall right here and here, and seal off part of the roof. You can then finish this section by placing a full wall here and a double door as an exit. In the top of right our peaks, we're going to section off this area with double door frames. As you can tell, I can't place this double door frame here, so I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this ramp to sheet metal, which will allow me to then place it. To finish off this area, we're going to place double doors on our mobility chutes, stone ladder hatch frames on our windows, horizontal embrasures facing outwards, and a vertical embrasure on the middle window. Next, we're gonna section off the bottom of the inner peaks with double doors. If you have batteries available, you can now place them in these windows. Now that our starter base is complete, we can begin building our compound. The next step is gonna be kinda of complicated, so I recommend you practice this on a private build server. We're gonna repeat this pattern on all four sides of the base. Start by building off this triangle with a triangle, Followed by two squares. Cap it off with the triangle. You can then remove your original build out and build back with two more triangles. Followed by two more squares. Remove that build out and you're left with a single square. For this next step, you're going to want to make two low walls and focus your crosshair in the center of this area. If you can't see this texture on your screen, you have to go into your settings and turn object quality all the way up to max. If you do not have object quality turned up, it'll look like this and you're not going to be able to tell what you're building. Line your crosshair up right here and then remove the two twig low walls. Place a foundation in the middle and build out two more square foundations followed by a triangle. It should look like this. You can then remove all the squares and build back towards your base with only triangles. Once you build out like this, place a square on the left side of your triangle, followed by two triangles in the middle. You can then build back to your base with two more triangles, and that completes the freehand build out. You can check to make sure it's right before you upgrade by placing a double door frame here and here, as well as a door frame here here. Make sure you can place a window here and here, as well as a door frame here and here. We're not actually going to upgrade these, but we're going to place those just to make sure you did it right before you upgrade. Remove these floors and the rest of your build out. You're now left with this freehand build out on each side of your base. At this point, if you double checked and everything is right, you can go ahead and upgrade this. Next, on each four sides of the base, we're going to start by placing a triangle right here followed by another triangle, and build out a complete circle of triangles. You can then remove this first triangle you placed, connect everything together, double door frames. You can place square foundations coming off the left and right sides, followed by a raised triangle foundation in the middle. From here, you can build a triangle foundation on the left and right sides, followed by a full wall on top of the raised triangle foundation. It should currently look like this. From this raised foundation, we're going to build out our external TC. Start by placing a twig square foundation, followed by a half moon of triangles. On the end, we're going to place two triangles, 
with the right triangle being your TC room. Place a single door on your TC room. And go ahead and place your TC down. We're going to upgrade this triangle. Place two half walls on top of each other. You can now see off the roof. And add a double door as your exit. To connect this section, this section of your base, we're going to add a square ladder hatch frame followed by a half moon of triangle ladder hatch frames. Now you can't build these here without some more stability. So we're going to delete our build out, build a triangle foundation right here, a twig double door frame and finish the half moon of triangles right here. Once this is all connected, you can remove your build out and upgrade the triangle ladder hatch frames. Now this connection can be soft sided. So I recommend upgrading this foundation to at least sheet metal, as well as this wall. Now that your four external TCs are down, we can start adding the compound. Start by building out two squares from the center of your base, followed by a triangle on the left and right side. As you can see, this is the perfect fit for a high external wall. Fill in the left and right side of your gatehouse with windows and see off the top. Add a double door frame as your exit. And on the inside of your compound, we're going to add a triangle foundation here and here, followed by a half wall here, here, and a Patrico peak right here. On top of your gatehouse, we're going to add a turret spot with half walls and seal off the top. If you have them unlocked, we can place a chain link fence here as well as here to prevent anyone from bowing out your turrets. On each of the exits, we're going to place a double door glass windows facing outwards, and horizontal embrasures facing inwards. This gives you a nice peek into your compound, and if someone goes deep on you, perhaps you can't throw anything out the window. At this stage, the base should look like this. In the next step, we're going to build out our compound bedroom. On each of the four sides, repeat this process. Start by placing a half wall here and here, followed by a window on top of that. On the left and right sides, repeat the same process. And see off the roof. If you have a locker available, you can place it on this high foundation right here. Place a roof on the left and right side. This will then seal in your locker. If you want to go back and add a locker right here, say you didn't have it unlocked, say you didn't have it unlocked, create this roof tile right here to sheet metal, and it will open up the middle tile, enabling you to place a locker right here and seal it back up. On the left and right sides of the section, add a full wall, followed by a half wall, and two triangle floors. You can then add a window here and here, followed by a single door and another window. At this point, you can seal off your bedrooms and add a low wall peak right here. I recommend putting glass windows here, here and here, a single door as an exit, two horizontal embrasures facing inwards like this, and two vertical embrasures facing outwards. At this point, you're ready to seal up your compound. For this, you're only going to need eight high walls. I often end up using wood high walls as they're really easy to get early on in wet. On top of each of the four gatehouses, we're going to add metal barricades. To make it easier for us to place them, we're going to place twig triangles on each of the sides. Place a metal barricade on the left and right, followed by another one in the center. You can then remove your twig build out. On top of your compound bedrooms, you can place a barricade on the left and right and build out a twig to place the last barricade. At this point in the build, you might have large furnaces and auto turrets unlocked, so we're going to go ahead and place those. We can fit four auto turrets on top of our gatehouses and eight large furnaces in these slots right here. At this point in the build, your large furnaces should be cooking a ton of metal, so we're going to go ahead and upgrade our base. With your newly found metal frags, we're going to start building the open core. I'm only going to repeat this on two sides of the base, so pay close attention. To make it easier for this tutorial, I'm going to turn on the two sided symmetry on Builder Sanctuary, which will allow me to build on two sides of the base at the same time. On the side with the full wall, we're going to build walls on each of the corners. And in this section, we're going to build our main loot room. Place two walls on the sides, followed by half walls in the middle. It should look like this. Next, we're going to fill in our ceiling tiles. 
as well as the middle of our open core. On the left side, we're going to add a half wall window peak. And on the right side, we're going to add a jump up into our open core. You can then fill in the middle of the floor and add a ramp right here for extra box space. Jumping up into the open core, we're going to continue building our loot rooms on the right and left sides. Temporarily place a twig floor right here and clip another twig floor through the wall. I'm going to fly through the wall so you can see what I'm talking about. You should now have a twig floor here, which will allow you to place our shelf. Place three triangles coming off the wall and upgrade them. On top of that, you can place another shelf. You can then temporarily place some double door frames here in order to place your ceiling. I recommend keeping these twigs. It's much easier to place the large boxes whenever there's nothing obstructing them. For the next step, we're going to start by filling in the top of our open core. Once again, this is only going to be symmetrical on two sides. On each of the four corners, we're going to place two half walls, followed by window frames on top of them. You can then place a square floor tile, followed by a square ladder hedge frame on top of that. Fill in the sides of your jump up. At this point, we can remove our double door and replace it with a garage door. On the top of your jump up, we're going to add a double door frame and seal off the roof. On the second floor of our open core, we're going to add two windows, seal on the top of your roof. Your base should look something like this. On the opposite two sides, we're going to build up with full walls. Place a ladder hatch frame in the middle. Place a triangle ladder hatch here. This is going to be the mobility from our shooting floor down to our first floor. On each of the two sides, we're going to add a single door followed by a window and windows on the opposite two sides. Place windows in each of the four corners followed by full walls facing the center. Next, we can seal off our ceiling. Place square ladder hatch frames in the corners. On each of the four corners, we're going to add a jump up. And on two sides, we're going to add a jump up to our roof, like that. And on the opposite two sides, we're going to add a roof peak with a single door. So on the left side, you should have a jump up. On the right side, you should have a roof peak. Fill in each of the four corners with a half wall and a square ceiling tile. Lastly, add an exit to your roof with the garage door. We can finish this area by adding deployables. Add a single door as your exit on each side and windows on each of the four sides. I like to place these embrasures facing inwards to give us more angles. If you have the brick or brutalist skin, I would upgrade these ladder hatch frames to brick or brutalist as it provides a smaller hitbox. If you don't have that skin, you can always upgrade to sheet metal. Facing the single door exit, we're going to place a double door frame followed by a full wall on the right mirrored on each side, followed by a full wall and a double door frame on each of the other two sides. Place a locker right here. In this area will be the shooting floor bedrooms. For the next step, we're going to build up our shooting floor. We're going to repeat this pattern on all four sides of the base. Start by placing a triangle foundation here, as well as here, and then build all the way up with double door frames. The base should look like this. For the next step, we're going to build up on our freehand sections with double door frames. On top of the square ramp peak, we're going to add more double door frames. Until it reaches the height where it's a half floor above the shooting floor. At this point, you can add a square ladder hedge frame in the middle and begin placing floor tiles. Once you've repeated this pattern on all four sides, it's time to add some windows. We're going to start out on the free-handed corners. Add a window on the left and right. And next, we're going to go to the section that's a half floor up. Place a window here, here, and here, and a triangle roof through the middle of the ladder hatch frame. Next, we're going to seal off the top. And if you'd like, you can go from below and place a square floor grill. This is completely optional, but I really prefer it. On the left and right sides, 
Place a single door, followed by a triangle ladder hatch frame. On top of this ladder hatch frame, we're going to place two triangle roof tiles. For the next step, we can go ahead and seal in the roof. In this section right here, we're going to add a low wall peak. On top of these four raised corners, we're going to add square roof tiles. And in between them, we're going to add two more square roof tiles. On top of these raised bits right here, we're going to add a set of double door frames and a spot for a turret and a windmill. If you have extra scrap available, I recommend placing four SAM sets on your roof so you don't end up getting MLRS rated. For the final step on our shooting floor, we're going to go back and add some deployables. On each of the four corners, we're going to add vertical embrasures. And in the middle, we're going to add three more vertical embrasures. Going inside our shooting floor, we're also going to add single doors on these roof peaks. This allows us to open them and peek the raiders when we need to. Simply close them, we don't want to get shot. Headed back into our open core, we can add some more vertical embrasures here, some boxes, a ramp here, as well as here, that can store more boxes, and a half wall to close it off. Going up this jump up, we can add a double door frame here, as well as here, and a garage door on top of that. You can then fill in this area with garage doors, and you're good to go. The last and final step is going to be upgrading our open core. Once the base is fully built, I recommend moving into this as it's going to be much stronger to store your loot in. I recommend upgrading everything to sheet metal, or if you have it, I would upgrade these walls to high qual. As well as the ceiling tiles. This will make any raid from the side cost about, cost between 20 to 30 rockets. and gives you more time to react to a raid. Place the boxes in the open core. We're going to go below the shelf. Place our boxes here. You can follow how I place these boxes so they aren't crooked and ugly. Once you've got all your boxes placed, you can place a double door frame here and here and seal it up with garage doors. Placing a horizontal embrasure right here gives you a nice peek into your open core. And on the left and right sides, you can add four bedrooms. We're going to finish our open core by placing some more deployables and some more windows. Now you should have four turrets on top of your roof, four turrets in your compound, so that leaves you four more turrets to place. This is entirely up to you, but I often find myself placing them on top of these breach peaks. Alright, that's the end of the tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or drop a comment in my Discord. Link is in bio. Peace.